I think no matter what, I think we're going to beat the cheat. I think this, and, and this is the last thing I want to say. I had an experience that happened to me. I don't often talk about them, Pastor Gene, but it happened in my second service. You can go out and look at it, those of you that are watching, where God came into our church. And this is what I know. There was a moment where I was caught up with the Lord. I felt alone, and I felt like I represented you that are watching, where you're like, God, what is going to happen? We're all alone. We've been fighting. We've been standing. We've been voting. And I looked up and I saw the Lord, whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. I know what I know. And he put his hand on me representing you and all of us who were standing. And it's almost like he, he hushed me. He stilled me. And I, was, I felt all alone. I didn't know what to do. And he held me back. And he went and he said, now I've taken you and this nation this far. Now it's my turn. And I saw him walk before us. And I'm, I'm excited because I really believe that we're going to see victory. But it's not just in the victory alone. It's how we, the people, are going to transition. What you just seen there was our old buddy Hank Kuhneman. Forgive me for the echoing and what you hear because I just had to stop and make this video in between the other videos I'm going to make. And as you see that he's talking about this vision, whatever it happened, this supposedly a spiritual experience. And he's saying that Trump is going to win and he's back to us continuing with the lies about the cheating and all of that. And if you don't recall of him ever saying that, let's take a listen. They want to sit there and call a guy who did not win the election. And it, it makes me laugh when Prop Fitz say that they heard that, that Biden would win the election. Well, you're, you're a wrong prophet. He didn't win. He lost the election. And let me tell you something. I was talking to Mike Lindell this week. I don't pray for him as a president. I don't call him president. I don't even acknowledge him as president-elect because he wasn't elected. He stole it. He's a treasonous thief. We're subject today to a lot more different things when a prophetic word comes forth about a candidate, about someone that God is choosing. It's, it's subject to a lot of things. People who say, for example, that the 2020 election... You know, they say, well, anybody who prophesied that Trump won, whether it be a prophet, an intercessor, a Christian, or just a guy on the street, you know, um, if you said that, you're wrong. Well, wait a minute. If you believe that the media has been telling us the truth all of this time, and you believe that a guy that was hiding out in his basement can't gather a crowd, he wasn't even around the crowds, could gather more than 80 million votes, well, you might want to re-examine your theology. This is a pastor, folks. This is what we go have going on. You know, I want to say this, that, you know, I, I've gotten responses sometime over since starting this channel and, and because I call out this Christian nationalism and certain things and people comment and say, why don't you ever say anything about, at the time, Biden or the Democrats or now Kamala? Why don't you say anything about their evil deeds or things like that? And, you know, my response to this, that is, is that, you know, I've been in, in April of 2025. It will be 30 years of me being within the ministry. And when I first realized I was called to the ministry, called to preach and things like that, at that time, I did not know which direction the Lord was taking me. But I'm called to be an evangelist. That's why you see the channel Evangelism for God. There's a difference between an evangelist and a pastor. And that's a whole different, you know, why is the spiritual gifts? And there is a difference. And the Lord at that time, back in 1995, when I first started preaching and things, he led me to show me that there's so much dysfunction going on within the church. And I, and I want you to speak out against that. And I want you to, you know, uh, motivate and encourage. But at the same time, you know, uh, uh, call it out. And because we need to be better examples as Christians is what the Lord showed me and that we don't want to be stumbling blocks to destroy others that are seeking some type of truth. And in doing that, there's the issues at that time. There was various issues and things like that. But this channel is not one to go through and this hit very. I mean, as far as.
preaching. If I'm called, if somebody was to call me and, and have me speak at a church or whatever, I'm going to pray and see what the Lord leads me to speak about. And that's how. So but as far as this channel, when I started it, it wasn't the goal. My goal for what I planned on doing was to have a channel where I was going to utilize my training and my my chaplaincy and my counseling training and have like a godly channel, which was going to be called Godly Advisor, was going to be the name of the channel where I was going to uh, basically uh, deal with, you know, people coming to issues and guidance and things like that on a spiritual level. But <laughs> the Lord turned, that's what he would do. He will change your plans, you know, because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And he showed me quickly, once again, took me back and reminded me, you've been doing this, Maurice, since the 90s. You've always spoke out against false teachings back then. You've always spoke about, about people going wayward and doing things and, you know, just following whatever. And I want you to do it again. And I want you to stand. And that's what I, why I took the man, that, that, you know, him serious and turned the direction with my channel to call out what has infiltrated the church like never before is where Christian nationalism with the Donald Trump at the head of it, where these pastors like Hank Kuhneman and all of them have made their ministries and many of them have became have become millionaires are doing extremely well financially because of one man. And in the midst of what they're doing, they've destroyed many souls in the process. And they come on with these lies, just like he's lying, talking about this vision of all of these things. And what this stuff is nothing but the enemy. It is familiar spirits, doctrine of demons. These folks are not hearing from God. They're hearing from evil spirits that have infiltrated their lives, their dreams, their, their these false ministries, and the people that follow them are having the same experiences. This is why they're restless. This is why they're in uproars. As you can see, that they're unstable, many of them. It's because there's no sleep for the wicked. There are the wicked fleas when no one's pursuing them. They're always looking over their back because they know that their minds and hearts are not right. And they're out here deceiving people. And this is why for whatever, you know, whatever happened, I don't know what other direction. I have goals for another channel or a couple other things that I would like to do. But the Lord has kept me right where I'm at with this because unfortunately, I don't know if I go back. I think what many of you know, my testimony, is it because my my father was involved in a false religion, and I, I feel like that's part of it, knowing that people, that I could have been deceived and on my way to being eternally separated from God. But he saved me. He came and saved me in October of 1992 when I decided to finally quit running from him and turn my life around, and he gave me that chance. And, and I, I, I hate to see people, you know, agree, you know, that's part of the gift when the Lord has given you a spiritual, whatever gift he's given you, that fire and that desire is going to be burning with inside you. And nothing grieves me more. I told you yesterday on the pre other day, yesterday on the video where I said, I grieve. I grieve all the time for souls. I grieve for anybody. I don't care how horrendous they may be. I still see them. As a person with a soul, a person that God loves, a person that he cares about, that I'm like, oh, no, if you don't stop, if you don't repent, if you don't do that, you're going to find yourself eternally separated from God forever. I hate to see it. I had a debate with my coworker where she was talking about, we were talking about people cheating and messing up families. And it was Tom Brady, talking about Tom Brady's wife being ex-wife being pregnant and I was like she was messing around people know she was having an affair with this guy before they even you know and Tom Brady had, and she's just angry because her two husbands left her with three daughters and did not take care of them and wasn't involved in their life so anything with men is like we know it worked we can't say anything because she's gonna attack the man 
right off. But I said, you know, I told her, I said, what gre what's grieving is, is that here is this families are co continuously being destroyed because of the, the selfish decisions that we as adults make. And that's, you know, grieves me so much to see this. There's a lot of dysfunction that is going on in society because of us, because of our selfishness and all of these things. And for some reason, you know, we think, oh, we can go pick a, a politician and, and yeah, we'll say he's anointed by God. He's sent by God or whatever. And they're going to fix everything when it all boils down to us and our selfishness and what has happened in the dysfunction within the church. One of my subscribers there mentioned it, which I thought was an excellent comment that has it ever dawned on you that people are not turning to the Lord because they've looked at your testimony. They've looked at the way you've conducted yourself. And they said, I don't want no part of that. I don't want no part of that Jesus that you're talking about that you serve. I've watched you all my life for you as a, whether you're a parent, a child, watching your parents or grandparents or family members, friends or whatever. And you've seen how they conduct themselves. And you say, uh-uh, I don't want no part of that. I don't want to be involved with any of that, that what you got going. And it, has it ever dawned on you on that? See, and you think that you could grab somebody and think that, oh, I'm going to grab this politician and I'm going to anoint him and lift him up as a golden calf. And I'm going to say that he's the only one that can fix the church, fix religion and all of this stuff. When it all boils back to the selfishness of us and the selfishness that's went on within the church where people, as I said it, the leaders in the community within these churches has failed us. They have failed us big time. And the Lord is going to hold every person that he's truly called to pastor really accountable. Those that he's called to shepherd, the ones that are truly called. He, there's, we already know what's going to happen to the false ones that are not called by him, the self-appointed pastors, self-appointed prophets, all of these other people that are going around claiming to speak in his name. We know what happens to them, but boy, I do not want to be in the shoes of somebody that they know that they were called by God to lead a flock of people who are called by God to do or perform a certain ministry out here and you're not doing it and haven't been conducting yourself in the right way and in the midst of it, you become a stumbling block and you are destroying souls. That's why I speak up. That's why I talk about this. And I'm going to continue to talk about it. We're going to continue to shine the light on it and all of the issues that the church want to run away from. Take the devil head on, punch it right in between the chops. Evangelism for God to the channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.